Hi, welcome to PageCloud 101, uh, your video resource for creating beautiful websites with PageCloud. Uh, my name is JP Emery, I'll be your host. Um, we're working today um, on a simple implementation of the mobile hamburger menu. And um, so for like the premise of this like series is for the beginning, we're gonna do simple implement implementations, but later on I'll go, go back through and do like a a start to finish of a page, which people are asking for on the forum. But for now, we're just gonna be implementing the actual menu that I posted under here. So we're gonna be going through this setup <clears throat> as if I was doing it brand new. I've already got a page created um, with a couple different elements, tried to mimic page cloud purple, and uh, I've got the hamburger menu icon. So we're just gonna go straight into it. Um, going through here, we have to actually create uh, menu icons and the menu, we have to create the nav bar and the menu icons themselves. And so when we go, I have this, this element, and I'm gonna make the nav bar out of it. Now I'm gonna use keyboard shortcuts a lot because me doing this on camera is not efficient. So you select the element, hit AW, that adjusts its width, the width of the white page on your screen, and then AL will adjust it to the left, and that just gets it centered. And AT will adjust it to the top, exactly where we need it to be. Now, I just went, uh, I just typed, typed MB, and that moved it to the back behind the actual menu icon, which is where we would want it to be. In this case, I'll go ahead and add some extra features. Just go ahead and not make it full bleed. Um, so when you run into errors like this, what you can do is hit Control Z, Control Z, and I'll take it back to what you were, what you did have. And so what I had is I had both of these selected. And so you'll have some of these hap some of these issues happen, um, but easy to go back with Control Z. So now it's stretched completely across. And what I do is I'll go in to actually create the nav bar. You actually have to name it nav. And the element for the ID, it actually has already, it actually already has the element because I copied it over from a previous page. So it already is named ham, which is what we have in the tutorial as the name needed. And so we have the nav bar named, we have the menu icon named. Now we have to create the drop down menu itself. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create kind of a housing element. This element is where everything's gonna live. We'll just make it this nice color right here. And we don't have to be specific. It can be any width or length. And next, I'll actually create the text elements. Now, you don't have to do really anything fancy. You just need a text element. And so now what you can you do now what you can you do now what you can do is line it up if you see that those purple lines are there that means it's lined perfectly with that element and so I go over here and I adjust it over and now that's perfect it's exactly where I need it to be it's locked into place page cop does a great job at centering things and locking them where they need to be so that even if you're so that you don't you're not off by a pixel and everything messes up and so now that we have it in place, what you'll what you have to do to really make sure they're all the same, which is in this guide to do, is you click on the element, you have it selected, which means you have all these dots, you have the guide dots, you hit control and drag, and it'll create a second one. And then you just align it, keep it all together, and you can create another one. And then click another one. Now 
Now what I'm doing is I'm making just a little bit longer, mainly because I want to have um, a little bit of space just to easily select all the items. You can select them all and group them and adjust them later, but in this case I just want it to be simple. And so now I go and I hit shift and I select each one. And now that they're all aligned perfectly, I go in and hit arrange and hit group. And that makes them one big group. That means I'll act as one. I can move them wherever I want, but I'm gonna move them here because I want them there. Because I want them to appear there. Now, now that I have the group selected, I can actually name it menu which is what, in the tutorial, we need to name it. Now, in the tutorial, I also have other names as well. I also have each one of these named. And so what you do to name something, say you have something grouped and you want to name something inside of it, you simply double-click inside, and it will select that element that was right underneath where you clicked. And so it has selected the first title, and so I name that Title 1. Unclick off goes back and title one Look here title two title three title four okay now the whole element is named we can move it around and it has all of the names we needed to have, at least I think. Edit menu, nav, the titles. Let's see. So there's a, an idea of a click capture shield. All that is is something that will um, give us the effect of clicking off of the menu when we're on mobile and that menu then disappearing because we're not using it anymore. And so the idea behind that is that it's just going to be cover the whole page. Now we don't want it to cover the whole page because we need to actually use the elements underneath it. So for now we're just going to make it like whatever size we want and then name the ID touch. I'm going to go ahead and save. Name this tutorial. And while I'm on that, um, this um, this tutorial and all other implementations that I've talked about on the forum are going to be hosted on clearkey.com clearkey.pagecloud.com slash tutorial. So you go there, you can view them, you can see the actual implementations there. And later on, what I'll do is I'll actually um, load like file site, like files there that you can download to just copy and paste those files over into widgets. That, are, that will be widgets and actively um, work. Uh, once we get down the, the standards we run with, the standards we're gonna run with, that'll be the easy way to like do a hamburger menu, to do a, um, a desktop dropdown menu, which I have implement implemented on my front page. So for now, this is gonna be um, kind of like where I'll direct people to go to look at it, as well as um, to find the links for the videos, uh, or just go to the YouTube page and view the videos there. Okay, so now that's named. And so it's all saved. The code's important. Let's go ahead and just paste the code in. So we've got this code, control C. Now, where do you go to implement code for this? For this, I just put it all on the general JavaScript page, just because that's simple for people to understand. Um, I just go JS, it opens it up. Now there is an order to this code. This code has to have the order um, that I actually posted it. So this code, this code goes in first. And this code goes in second. Okay. 
So now let's go to the mobile view. So we go to the mobile view. We have the actual nav bar there. Now everything looks a little weird when you actually go to the mobile view. It doesn't look great. So what you do is you can move things around. And under here, um, if you ever need to get a, just a general tip, if you ever need to get an idea as to where the elements are, if you don't see what's going on, hit Control Alt X and you'll be able to see if there are any images you're missing. So if I'm missing the hamburger menu, where's the hamburger menu? I'm actually wondering where the hamburger menu is. And to get out of that menu, get out of this mode, you hit the same, Control Alt X. And so it seems the hamburger menu is gone. So what I'll do is I'll just go over to this page that I already have it selected, and I'll paste it in again. Nope. Oh, it's over here. Look at that. Isn't nice. Okay, it's already named. Now you can really leave this wherever you want. It doesn't have to actually sit there. Uh, when you actually leave it here, it'll just, just for convenience sake, be there for when we need it to be. See that there for now. Okay, so we have all the code in, but I'm not sure if the code is exactly perfect for this yet. So I'm going to go ahead and go and explain it in detail so that you know under know and understand what actually is going on. So when we go into the code, you see a couple of things. The top line you see that is fixing the nav bar to the top, so that it always will scroll with the menu, so that wherever you go. On the um, as you scroll down, it will stay at the top fixed. Next, this code here, this is actually determining what this is actually determining um, the height and the parameters of the page. So wherever this page exists, um, be it on a four-inch screen or a six-inch screen, it will determine those parameters and then um, differentiate heights and calculate heights that need to be inputted so that. Um, the CSS gets modified so that elements go where they need to go always, regardless of size. This is the actual code executing the CSS. So it's using the variables defined up here on whatever page gets loaded, whatever page it gets loaded on to, um, to know where to put these things. And so I'm going to comment that out just because we don't need that. This code right here is basically saying, OK, when the page initially loads, I want those elements, I want the menu to be gone, to be display none, to not show up at all. Because when you hit the button is when you want it to appear, not like right when the page loads. And this one down here is basically to say whenever the that touch touch screen that whenever anything else but the menu is clicked, then that is going to close the menu and get rid of the touch ID, the touch um, interface. That click capture, I think is what I call it. So that should work. Let's find out if it does. So I found out that it doesn't. Um, in response to that, I went ahead and um, modified the code, figured out what was wrong, 
Uh, what was wrong was I was missing the variable for the width of the window and the sections for the fourth title. And with that, the code just wasn't executing at all to hide it, the, the, the display none being down here, so it didn't actually get to it. Okay, so that was it for the code. Um, I also discovered that the first take was also a little pixelated because I was going a little too fast. And so I'm going to try and go a little slower so that it comes through because I'm running this on not the equipment you would normally run this on uh, to uh, record um, video. All right, go out of that. Looking at the menu, so everything's in place. The only modification I made was that the na the actual um, hamburger menu icon is grouped with the nav bar. And th what that means is, yeah, I actually named all of it nav. So instead of just the bar being, instead of the bar being named nav, the whole grouped, uh, the grouped elements together, together are named nav. And so we go over here and we reload it. We click and it works. I click again. It goes away. Click. It goes away. Click. It goes away. And next, aside from that, what I'm going to do, a little fun stuff. Don't want a page called logo, because they'll like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this group. So I have it selected. And what you want to do if you have a group and it's ID'd uh, is delete the ID first, because it won't let you disband the group otherwise. Then hit Arrange, Ungroup, and then hit, because all those items will still say still, still say stay selected when you ungroup. You hit Select. On the keyboard and then just click what element you want to add and then hit group again and then just rename it nav and it probably just went a little too fast but we'll see it in action So we click and click. Click. Click a little too fast. Okay. So great. It's working. That's fantastic. The uh, only other thing you'll need to do to make your navigation menu work is to link each one of these elements to your um, to your corresponding page or part within this page that you want it to shoot to. That is the, f so I guess this is the first, um, this is the end of the first video. Again, my name is JP Emery with clearkey.io and uh, there'll be more to come. Thanks. Thanks for watching.